Hello and welcome to how to build green skin armies. First things first, let's go through the strengths and weaknesses of the green skins overall. Now for their strengths, they have some of the toughest and most damaging frontlines units in the game. They also have a few top tier monsters for every task from large all the way to colossal. And finally, they do have a limited but a very powerful magical roster with two out of three being very highly damaging and extremely impactful in battles. For their weaknesses, however, they have a fairly limited ranged roster with a few of them ever getting decent damage. Their generic lore choice is also a little limited and certainly not the strongest. And finally, they have low leadership for the most part until you get to the late game, so your units will be breaking before they've even slightly been finished off, leaving a lot of value still on the table. Okay, let's first go through our early game composition. This will be using tier 0 units such as the Goblin Great Shaman, the Night Goblin Warboss, the Orc Warboss, the Goblins and the Goblin Archers and tier 1 units, Orc Boys and Savage Orcs. But you do need to own Ekrund or be playing as Wurzak to unlock these. For the early game, any of the three lore choices are technically okay. The Goblin Great Shaman has the lore of the Little War. Personally, I don't care for this lore, so I tend to avoid these chaps. But if you want to cast a lord, then they are the only choice. The Night Goblin War Bosses are smaller Goblin Frontlines units that are faster than Orcs, but are still just a Goblin. On the bright side, they do have the Spinning Loons ability. But other than that, they are fairly weak fighters compared to the obvious choice for me, the Orc War Boss. Bigger and harder fighting lord that can spoil your front lines with decent damage and great toughness for those early game duels. They also get some nice mounts later on and keep on being a great fighter, so they are my personal choice. For the front lines, this is rather boring. We're going with 10 orc boys. Just fly out better than goblins in every single way. Neither do great versus cav charges, so you may as well go with the tougher dudes with better damage and just keep them spawned if cav takes an interest in them. They will hold the line okay, but of course they will need some help dishing out enough damage once they get against something that's a little bit tougher. For the back lines, again, very basic, going with 9 Goblin Archers. Pretty crap damage and not the best range, but they are your only choice of ranged units, so it's tough to Tongos. Get them on the backs and sides of the enemy lines to maximise their damage and minimise friendly fire. With this many units, you'll be able to wear almost anything down if you try hard enough and focus fire on any large and very armoured targets. The strength of this army is the relatively strong front line with pretty high damage and defence. The Lords will also be doing well in those early game duels and helping out a ton on the front lines. Archers will also be able to focus fire nearly anything down since there are just so bloody many of them. As for the weaknesses, there is fairly low leadership on the whole, as is customary for the early game greenskins. The low damage ranged units are pretty useless, unless they are heavily focused firing, they will be struggling. And also this army is a little bit slow compared to some other factions. Coming to the mid game now, we have access to tier 2 units, Nasty Skulkers, Orc Arrow Boys, Goblin Wolf Riders, Goblin Wolf Rider Archers, Trolls, Snotling Pump Wagons, Goblin Big Bosses, and Savage Orc Arrow Boys, but again, need to own Ekrund or be playing as Wurzak. We also have access to tier 3 units, so Night Goblins, Orc Big Guns, Night Goblin Archers, Black Orc Big Bosses, Horus Goblin Spider Riders, Horus Goblin Spider Rider Archers, Goblin Wolf Chariots, Orc Ball Boys, Night Goblin Squig Hoppers, Squig Herds, River Trolls, Stone Trolls, Giant River Troll Hags, Night Goblin Shaman, Orc Shaman, Goblin Rock Lobbers, Snotling Pump Wagon Flappers, Snotling Pump Wagon Spiky Rollers, Savage Orc Ball Boy Biggins, but you need to own Ekron or play Wurzag, Savage Orc Ball Boys, same issue, and Savage Orc Biggins, but again, you need to own Ekron or play Wurzag. For my mid-game composition, I'm of course sticking with my Orc War Boss, as they will still be doing some work on the front lines, and possibly getting on a mount if you're not into saving up your skill points. I'm now picking up an Orc Shaman, that you want to grind levels into their spells as fast as possible to make use of those insanely damaging casts. For the front lines, I'm upgrading to 6 Orc Biggins, very high health and decent armoured front lines units, basically tougher and more damaging versions of the original boys, so it's a no-brainer going for the upgrade. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not going for any Savage Orcs in these compositions, it's because they are so niche. Of course, if you're playing as Wurzag, be sure to take them because they are better than the choices at the same tiers, but for the most part, it is more difficult to get a hold of them, so I'm going to be avoiding them just for this video. To assist in the front lines damage department, I'm bringing 4 Stone Trolls, as they're the highest damage trolls in the faction, and overall, the best ones in every stat but defence. Embed these boys in the front lines and watch them go to work and dish out tons of damage. If they take too much damage, then pull them back and let the regeneration come into effect. For the back lines, we're going with 6 Night Goblin Archers. These have better damage than your Goblin Archers, as well as Poison imbued attacks for debuffing whatever it is they're shooting at. Still no outstanding damage versus armor, so you want to spread that poison effect around as much of the enemy army as possible to make the most of it. Finally, for our artillery, we're going with 2 Goblin Rock Lovers. These are a standard catapult unit for lobbing rocks operated by goblins. Does great armor piercing damage over a massive range, so allow you to turtle a little, even if that isn't the most dominant playstyle. The strength of this army, now gaining some spellcaster presence with outstanding damage once you get to the later spells. It's also a much tougher front line, alongside some smashing monsters to dish out more damage inside of them. And finally, better ranged units with a great poison effect, as well as the addition of artillery, brings a lot of ranged firepower and a lot of range to your army. 
For the weaknesses, however, no cav or anything like that to take care of enemy ranged units, so you have to take them out with ranged, also for the bombardments. This is still not the most incredible leadership on the front lines, particularly trolls who will break really easily after taking a spot of damage. Also, the larger front line makes it easier to friendly fire them, so you really have to be careful to get a good angle with those ranged units, particularly with the poison effect. Finally, we come to our late game composition. This has access to tier 4 units, Black Orcs, Night Goblin Fanatics, Night Goblin Archer Fanatics, the Arachnorok Spider, Orc Ball Boy Biggins, Orc Ball Chariots, Giants, and Doom Diver Catapults. And finally, our only tier 5 unit, the Rogue Idol. My late game composition, of course, still being led by the Orc Warboss, should be on that flying mount by now and be able to take down enemy back lines and assist in the front lines wherever he's needed most. The Orc Shaman should have all their spells by now to provide a ton of value across the battlefield. They should also be on the Warboar mounts, so be able to get around to where they are needed much more quickly. For the front lines, we're going with six Black Orcs, top of the line front lines units with extremely high armor and also high damage, meaning they can go toe to toe with almost anything and come out on top. Combine this with some casts from the Orc Shaman and they will be shredding whatever you put in front of them. We're going with two rogue idols, which are massive monstrous units that will wade into the front lines and make it even more of a roll. They are huge targets, however, so make sure to deal with enemy ranged if you want them to survive. We're also going with two Ragnarok spiders, another couple of massive monsters, but these guys are specializing in taking out large units, so have them head into combat against them and take them out as quickly as possible. Same problem as the rogue idol, however, keep them safe and ranged as they really are huge targets. The back line's a very minor upgrade to six Night Goblin Arch Fanatics. You get the Spinning Loons ability, so bring them close to the front lines to use it, and then back off to support your army with ranged fire. Just make sure you get a gun angle so you don't friendly fire and poison your own troops. And finally, our artillery is getting a massive upgrade to Doom Diver Catapults. These are an artillery units with guided projectiles that are literally goblins in wingsuits that deal massive armor piercing damage over a huge range with pinpoint accuracy. Tag these guys on literally anything, and they will almost certainly hit it. The strength of this army is a brilliant lord and hero presence with powerful spells and a mobile fighter that dominates wherever is needed. They also have one of the toughest and most damaging front lines in the game, supported by huge monsters to roll over anyone on the map. Finally, the range is getting a boost with the added utility of the fanatics and the massive damage and range of the doom divers. The weaknesses, however, still not a lot of good ways to take care of enemy ranged units, aside from sending the lord in deep, which is a bit of a massive risk. The ranged units still want to get a good angle to avoid poisoning all of your front lines and massive monster units. Again, not the fastest armor in the world, with a lot of heavy armor and heavy monsters slowing your advance pretty significantly. I'll now pass you over to live commentary Miles to close you out and show you how this army performs in battle. Take it away. Thank you very much for that, Miles. As we can see, going against Empire. Shocking, I know. And uh, my layout has changed a little bit since I showed you the composition. I've actually moved all of my Night Gullman Archer Fanatics over to the forest over here because I was like, well, if I deploy them right here, they're just going to get shot to pieces. So if I go for a big old flankeroo, uh, then they can get some shots off before the enemy notices. And also, um, to get that spinning loons, but I can't quite highlight it, but you know, the spinning loons built where they go, whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, they actually need to be engaged in melee. So I thought if I bring them over here, charge them in uh, to something, just to charge that up, and then uh, I'm able to throw them into combat with that spinning loons built it, then that will work a little bit better. Unfortunately, it looks like the, uh, the Empire Captain is cheating and just knows exactly where they are. Um, but uh, I think we actually managed to escape just about unscathed and possibly unseen. Unfortunately, the Hellstorm rocket batteries are just slaughtering my Black Orgs. It is really painful. This is the downside of going against the Empire. They do tend to crush you with those bloody Hellstorm rocket batteries. Now, the Demogriff Knights with Halberds are charging my Arachnorok Spider, which isn't a great matchup for anyone, to be honest, because, you know, the Arachnorok Spider is good versus large, but so are they. So, yeah, they're going to do a significant amount of damage to each other. No one's really going to be too happy. But once we bring in some Black Orcs support with their massive 50 armor piercing damage, we should be a little bit better. And holy crap, that was a shot from the Luminarch of Hage there, slaughtering an entire line of those Black Orcs. That was very painful to watch. There you go, just narrowly avoiding being detected by these Demogriff Knight Halberdiers. Uh, my Night Goblin Fanatic Archers are now moving into position to get off some starting shots, saving my Winds of Magic on the Orc Warboss for a very specific cast. I'm sure you're all aware of what that is going to be. As you can see, I've sent my Orc Warboss into the back lines here to take out those health on rocket batteries. Again, this is my only option for taking, out, taking them out, uh, and it's not really the best since it puts him in danger, and it means that my front lines is completely without any uh, encouragement, which is not good at all. But thankfully, we have a lot of monsters uh, in these front lines so the rogue idols and of course my uh, caster is here to provide emotional support for my units there we go the night goblin f fanatic archers which is quite the mouthful i'm just going to call them archers uh, have now moved in and are firing upon the enemy unfortunately a massive luminarch of high shot there takes out half of that unit is going to break but it will be back very very soon this is about the time when i noticed that okay i'm starting to break my archers or he's starting to break my archers even and uh, that's not good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to charge them all into this Luminarch faction. We just saw the fourth Gorg come out there on two units of enemy greatswords, and that is going to slaughter them and completely crumble their leadership. Or it would if they weren't the fucking caravan of greatswords, which I always seem to be up against. 
Because I noticed that Luminaka Faishi is rapidly taking out my my, uh, my guys. And I'm like, you know what? How about I just send them all to attack this? Charge up that um, that spinning loons and then send them in. Use the spinning loons and then just have them uh, fire on, in ranged for the remainder of the battle. And that is what I'm going to do here. As you see, I'm rapidly changing targets on the Doom Diver Catapults to make sure that I'm targeting healthy units rather than targeting something that's already broken and essentially wasting my ammo. Uh, I've taken out one unit of the Hellstorm Rocket Batteries and we're now working on the second. Of course, Luminax of Hydra continuing to fire into my lines, but unfortunately, instead of firing onto my massive Rogue Idols or the Arachnox Spiders, it's time to fire onto my Archers, which are by far my cheapest units. Uh, so I'm not really too torn up about that. Uh, the majority of the front lines battle, as you can see over here, has been, well, completely decimated by me. My Black Orcs really are just that good. And when you throw in some monstrous spot with the Rogue Idols, they, they really are bloody top-notch, lads. So a lot of my units tend to be stood around because, you know, I'm terrible at micromanagement. But eventually, I'll give them the small orders. As you see, the Halberd is time to charge back into two units of Black Orcs and Rogue Idols. That is not going to work out too well for them at all. Oh, they're being spotted by their General of the Empire and the Empire Captain. But again, I really don't think it's going to work out too nicely for them. Uh, uh, my, as you can see, my Y is just activated, giving my units a ton of damage and melee attack and immune psychology. So if I was actually doing anything with them, this would be very useful indeed. As you see, I'm managing to charge up a bunch of my spinning loons. We just casted one over here, and I believe there is going to be a second cast of it. There it is, taking out those handgunners. So we've managed to shatter a lot of the uh, enemy ranged units and are now just moving to pick off what remains. Uh, what remains is actually the Lunax of Heish. Uh, they, they are outrunning my Night Goblin Ar Archer Fanatics. Uh, so this one is pretty much harmless. It's just being chased away until Oblivion, which, you know, isn't the best, but it could certainly be a lot worse. The other one is kind of in the middle of my lines and is, again, choosing to focus on my cheapest units rather than these massive expensive ones that are doing the majority of the damage. These uh, Demogriff Knight Halberdiers decide to charge my artillery, but I decide to focus fire them, and they quickly retreated because the damage of those boys is pretty ridiculous. As you can see, a cast, uh, what, what's that spell called? There we go, here we go, going down on this little cluster of highly damaging units here, which gives them a massive 40 bonus to their melee attack. So we can see the Ragnarok Spider with 98, and this boy with 61. That cast ran out very quick. Bloody hell, that was fast. But yes, the Ragnarok Spider now finally moving in to take on the Luminarch of Heish, and with that anti-large damage, that thing is not long for this world. As you can see, it's just getting absolutely shredded, and the leadership is slowly beginning to shatter. And bingo, bango, bongo, that's Army Lossos. Just this, uh, this army, probably not the best uh, management from me. Uh, Micromanagement for the green skins is a little bit chaotic because you just have to constantly be just giving orders to everyone because it's so fast with their momentum. Uh, you know, I could make up excuses all the live long day, but uh, overall, we got the Pyrrhic victory. Uh, so, you know, do we deserve to call it victory? I mean, it says victory right there, so I think I'm going to take it. For a more in depth for the review, let us go to the stats. As you can see, my Orc Warboss was mainly taking on those Hellstorm Rocket Batteries and eventually taking on one of the Lumen Ashes of Hike. Hike? That's not the name. Heish. That is the name. Uh, so, not the most kills on his part, but 5,316 damage and 1,616. That's a lot of 16s. Damage value means that it did take out both those units, and if not completely kill them, remove them from battle so that they could not continue firing. Uh, my Orc Shaman, with only the one cast of Foot of Gork, and it came a little bit late into the battle since we started with so few Winds of Magic, so the great swords that he stomped on weren't at full health, otherwise he would have got a ton more kills and a ton more damage, and of course a ton more damage value, but nevertheless, very, very useful, and that Here We Go cast certainly did help the Arachnox Spider and the Rogue Idol and the Black Orcs in taking on their matchup. Uh, as for the Black Orcs here, let's just go for an average, so 700, 1800, wow, bloody fantastic, 870, 1700, 300... Yeah, so about an average of probably 700, 800 uh, between them all. Uh, I don't know what happened with these guys. They must have been the ones that were fighting the Down Griff Knight Halberdiers and end up in that massive clump of highly valuable tags, including the Lord and Hero, which they absolutely annihilate because the damage on Black Orcs is freaking fantastic. It is so top-notch, much armor-piercing, fantastic defense, fantastic offense, fantastic armor. They're just a great all-around unit. And if you're playing the Orcs and you don't have access to Savage Orcs and you're not using the Black Orcs in your final endgame composition, then I don't know what's wrong with you because these things... A bloody brilliant. Onto the range units now, the Night Goblin Arch Fanatics. Uh, not the most damage value, looking like an average of, yeah, probably an average of about 300, 400, with that one anomaly of 760 there. Uh, again, the cheapest unit on the, on the, on the, in the army. Uh, all that I really wanted to do was use that poison damage, but I just kept getting shots piece by the Luminac Fight, so I did have to direct my forces towards it, which probably was not the best use of them. In fact, it definitely was not the best use of them, but it did keep that Luminac of Hydra visit and meant that it didn't take on any of my uh, more precious units. Uh, so I'm more than happy for all of them to have kept that visit. And of course, they did take out plenty of their enemy ranged units. It's just with that poison, they don't tend to get the kills, they just tend to even get, they tend to get the assists rather than the actual kill itself. So enough to complain about there from me whatsoever.
For the two Arachno Expires, we have 1100 and 1200 damage value there. They were, of course, fighting the Demogriff, Ni Demogriff Knights with Hellbirds. I don't know what accent this is, but I seem to have slipped into it accidentally. Um, yes, so they were taking on those guys, which is very, very valuable. valuable. And those units were only there to fight the Arachnox Spider and the Rogue Idol. So it is an unfortunate matchup for them. But it's very fortunate that the Arachnox Spider with that anti-large damage. Because they absolutely shredded them. And then eventually moved on to the Illuminax of Heish. And absolutely shredded them. Uh, if the battle had gone, uh, you know, to full time. And everything was unbreakable. They would have absolutely taken them out with not even a bother. The Rogue Idol's 22 and 8 kills there. With 540 and 1500 damage value. Not paying for themselves. Not even close. But wading into the front lines, nevertheless, and getting a lot of the enemy great swords and rolling them. And the thing is, when you've got this many units on the front lines, like we have six there, two here, and then two there. And if you count all these guys also focusing on the front lines, like we've got over half our army focusing on taking out the front lines. So the damage value is going to spread across them quite a lot. It's very substantial. Uh, so I'm not too bothered about them not having the most damage value because their presence there and their large AOE attacks and their huge damage, it certainly contributes. Of course, the Doom Dive Catapults are final two units with 1,600 and 1,400 damage with over 10,000 damage for each of them. Absolutely beautiful unit. I love these guys. Since they've been in Warhammer 1, they've just been a pleasure to watch in action. They're hilarious. They're horrifically disturbing, true, uh, but they're just so much fun to use and the damage they do is truly outstanding. Send them against any armored infantry and they will shred them. From across the entire map and they do not miss it is as simple as that but yes that about wraps up everything for this video on how to build green skin armies i do hope you've enjoyed if you did then be sure to leave a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel because i'm putting out videos like this every single week along with a bunch of other stuff i'd like to take this time to thank all supporters of the channel both here on youtube and over on twitch and of course on patreon in particular i'd like to thank kobe said so and it's your boy lc for their wonderful support at the unclean ones tier i really can't thank you guys enough one more time, thank you so very much for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Dumbers, and I will see you next turn.